I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry. Here we will discuss maximum and minimum value of trigonometric functions. Now this is a vast topic with a lot of applications. So in this particular video, I have taken three examples and they are all similar kind based on the relation a cos x plus b sin x. Right? So we will first derive this expression and then based on that result, we will answer the other two also. I have properly selected these two questions. As you can see, they are not exactly the same. So understanding these three will help you understand any question based on a cos x plus b sin x, right? As most of you know, the maximum and minimum for this function will be square root of a square plus b square, right? So that is going to be the maximum value with a positive sign and the minimum value will be minus square root of a square plus b square. So in a multiple choice test question, you can see the equation immediately get to the solution. Very simple. We'll derive this formula. Now in part B and C, we have made slight changes. As you've seen here, we have added 9. So, so this number will be 9 plus minus square root of 4 square and 3 square, which is 5. So you get your result straightforward. Here in part 3, to find maximum and minimum, we have... A very different function. 3 cos x plus 5 sine x minus pi by 6. If you expand this, you can actually get that form and then using this result, you can quickly get to the solution. So that is how we could actually get a solution to this equation. Now we could actually have other forms of this equation also, which I'm not covering now, or I might just add and that is to find maximum minimum of 8 to the power of sine x times 16 to the power of cos x. It also falls under the same category. Correct? Now let's see how to solve these questions one by one. So in the very first question, we are taking general formula a cos x plus b sine x and we'll try to figure out how to get maximum. So here you make a substitution, which is a equals to, let us say, r cross alpha and b as equal to r sine alpha. In that case, a square plus b square will be equals to r square cos square alpha plus r square sine square alpha, right? Now from here, you can say that a square plus b square is equals to r square and within bracket we can write cos square alpha plus sine square alpha which is 1 so we get a square plus b square equals to r square or r is equal to square root of a square plus b square with positive and negative sign right so that is uh, the kind of relation which we are going to use now, let's begin with the equation, which is a cos x plus b sin x. So, we are making this substitution. Instead of a, we are going to write r cross alpha, right? So, we could write this as r cos alpha times cos x plus r sin alpha times sin x. Now you could make, uh, you could use cos a minus b formula or, or sin a plus b formula. You could use many different forms, right? Now in this particular case, we see that r is common factor, right? So we get in the bracket cos alpha cos x plus sin alpha sin x. Using compound angle formula, I could write this as cos alpha minus x. Right, so we have written this form as r times cos alpha minus x. Now this clearly means that we know what is the limit for cos alpha minus x. The value of cosine, as you know, can be only between 
as far as cos alpha minus x is concerned, it could only be between minus 1 and plus 1, correct? Now, since it is r times, it will be between minus value of r, right? Cos alpha minus x or positive value of r. Well, r is square root of plus minus square root b. So, we could write this as square root of a square plus b square square root r cos alpha minus x, right? Square root of a square plus b square. So that is how we get our maximum or minimum range for this particular function. So we can say the maximum value is square root of a square plus b square and the minimum value is negative a square plus b square. Perfect. So this is a strategy which helps us to solve many questions where it is noticeable that the angles are same, right? Coefficients could be different, perfect, for sine and cosine. Now let's take question number two. In question number two, we have the value of r as equal to square root of 4 square plus 3 square, right? So you can write minus 3 square, square root, which is equal to square root of 16 plus 9, which is we should write plus and minus. We'll just write plus and minus later. So anyway, this is this is 5, right? So we know that the maximum value for this part of the equation, which is of the form of a cos x, it could be plus or minus. doesn't really matter. b sin x, correct? So this portion, that is the limit, right? So what we could write here is that the the value of 4 cos x minus 3 sin x is between minus 5 and plus 5. But yet we have plus 9 here. So we'll, nine, we'll add 9 here, right? So we'll add 9. So we get 4 cos x minus 3 sin x plus 9 should be less than or equal to plus 5 plus 9. So this value of 4 cos x minus 3 sin x plus 9 should be within. So 9 plus 5 is 14. And when you take away, you get 4. So that becomes your maximum and minimum value. Correct? So the maximum value is 14 and the minimum value is 4. Does it make sense to you? So that is how you are going to answer this part of the question. Now let's take question number three. Now here we have to find maximum minimum value of three cos x plus five sine x minus pi by six. Well, because this is sine of x minus pi by six, we'll kind of expand this. So, so we have three cos x plus five sine of x minus pi by 6, correct? So, we'll use the compound angle formula to expand this part. So, we get 3 cos x plus 5 times sin a cos b, which is sin x cos of pi by 6 minus cos a, which is cos of x sin of pi by 6, right? So, we have used the compound angle formula here which is if we have sine a minus b then it could be written as sine a cos b minus cos a sine b correct now this formula as most of you know if it is plus here then this is plus correct okay now what is the value for pi by 6 so we can make a triangle here to find the value for sine and cosine pi by 6 sides being 1, 2, square root 3, the angle of our interest is pi by 6, right? This is pi by 3. So we can substitute the values. We get 3 cos x plus 5 sin x cos of pi by 6. So from here, cos of pi by 6 is square root 3 over 2 minus cos x 
Sine of pi by 6 is half. Right? So now we can open this bracket. So what we get here is 3 cos x. Uh, and we have plus 5 square root 3 over 2 sin x. And we have minus 5 over 2 cos x. Okay? Applying the distributive property, multiplying both the terms by 5. Now you can combine these two, right? So, so we could write here 5 minus uh, 3 minus 5 by 2 cos x plus 5 over 2 square root 3 of sin x. So that gives you how much? 6 minus 5 is 1, or rather half of cos x, plus 5 over 2 square root 3 of sin x. Now you see it is of the form a cos x plus b sin x. Correct? So we know the maximum and minimum values. So let's find the maximum and minimum values now. That is to say, the maximum and minimum value will be plus minus square root of a, which is uh, a square half, right? So we'll have half square here, plus this square, which is 5 square root 3 over 2 whole square, right? That is what we need to evaluate. Now half square is... 1 by 4 plus. This square is how much? Square root 3 square is 3. 3 times 5 square is 25, right? So 3 times 25 is 75 over 4. So that gives you square root of 76 over 4. Or it is equal to plus minus square root of 4 goes 1 times, 36 means 9, so we have plus minus 19 as our result, right? So we find that the maximum value is equal to square root of 19 and the minimum value is minus square root of 19, right? So that is how you could actually solve this question, right? Let me add this bonus question along with what we have done. We'll also find the maximum and minimum value of 8 to the power of sin x times 16 to the power of cos x. So how do we work this out? So we are given 8 to the power of sin x times 16 to the power of cos x. Now 8 could be written as 2 to the power of 3, right? So we have 2 to the power of 3 sin x times 2 to the power of 4 cos x. Do you see how? We are getting the same form, right? So we could write this as 2 to the power of, they get added up, right? So we get 3 sin x plus 4 cos x. Now it is in the same form, right? So it is of the form of a, a cos x plus b sin x, correct? Now in this case, maximum minimum, as we have seen, is a square plus b square square root. So here a is 3, b is 4, right? So we have a equals to 3, b equals to 4 in the exponents. Therefore, in the exponents, the maximum and minimum value will be 3 square plus 4 square square root, which is plus minus 5. So the maximum value will be equal to 2 to the power of plus 5 and the minimum value is going to be equal to 2 to the power of minus 5. You get the idea, right? 2 to the power of plus 5 is 32 and 2 to the power of minus 5 is 1 over 32. So we get a range for the given function, right? So the form given an exponent could also be uh, written as the a cos x plus b sin x form and so we can apply the same strategy and find the result. So that is how we could actually solve such a question. I hope you understand and appreciate how useful this technique is and with using this technique it is very easy and effective to find maximum minimum of such functions where you get sum of sin x and cos x. I hope it makes sense. 
Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.